Hey, hey, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Hope everybody is doing excellent today. And I'm sure everybody's just slam busy. We're probably about as busy as we've ever been right now, which is good. You know, every year we've grown and grown and grown on revenue-wise, so it's not surprising. June's normally, um, you know, one of the busiest months of the year. You know, June, August, October are consistently... Uh, you know, it's it, it, the vying for that, that that most busiest part of the season of the year for us. So going in July, a lot of times July is a little bit of a downturn. It was not last year. So um, la- last year we did as much in July as we did in June and, and, and August. But in years past, it was pretty much always kind of a downturn year. So anyway, hope everybody's doing great. Um, everybody needs to make it a habit to embrace change and it's very very difficult for people to do that there's several different things that have gotten me thinking about that and that's the reason i'm talking about it this morning um i I think i mentioned in past videos i've i've had the 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 opportunity which has led to a lot of my success to to become friends from a very young age with people much older than i am i mean people born in the in the in the 30s and 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 40s and, and then 50s and um you know, the 50s is my dad, 1950s is my dad's age, but the 30s and 40s, I mean, I, you know, I still, some of my best friends are, are 80 years old <laughs> or, 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 or over. But one thing I tell you, you will notice with them is, 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 as everybody knows, old people do not embrace change. They, they can't, they can't stand it. And that's um, part of the reason generally people up in their 80s are, they're stagnant. They're, they're not growing and maybe they don't want to. They've gone out there, they've done it. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm sitting here at 28 years old saying I'm not going to be that way, so I'm going to push to the day. You know, I'm going I'm, to I'm push until I'm, until I'm, I'm pushing on six foot of daisies. Uh, you know, pushing up on six foot of daisies. But, um, you know, they, they just get stagnant, um, and they, they don't progress. And without change, you're, you're, just, you're, you're not going to progress at all. Other things I've noticed is more experienced or older business owners, a lot of times they get set in their ways. And I, and, um, they, you know, I've worked my, my last job. I haven't, you know, this is only my junk doctor. Well, junk doctors, junk move. I've had some other business. I've, I've only ever worked for one company other than myself. Yeah. It was a roller skate rink. And I learned a lot as far as customer service from, from, from that guy and, and how to treat people from the owner of that place. And, um, it's paid off, uh, you know, very well. It's, it's helped me out a lot in business, but that place they they were stuck in the 80s or 90s you know 80s or early 90s it wouldn't change because i had some great ideas i said hey you know let's let's do this and some of the stuff they, they did actually take some of the ideas um some some stuff on birthday parties well, the way we restructured them that was my idea and they, to this day they're still doing it that way and but i had a lot of other ideas i think would have done really well to have helped that place out and they just were afraid of change they didn't want to try anything and um you know at the time I'm, i was 16 18 you know 19 years old so that might have hurt me a little bit uh but at the same time i think they just they were afraid they were afraid of change they would not change it's the way they'd always done it. it's the way they're going to keep on doing it and to this day they're still in business which you know a lot of roller skating rings can't say that they're still in business and they're doing decently well um but just afraid of change i've seen it you know a lot of junk removal business owners too you know um they you operate i mean some of these guys that have been in business 10 20 30 40 plus years and they just um they they, they won't change they, they won't try anything new and and they've been they're getting left in the wayside i mean i just the just the other day there was a guy that um spent most of the phone call trying to educate me on junk removal we, and, and and i i mean i, I wasn't pushing back much god been in business for 40 some years and uh you know, we, we had a good conversation, and, and, and he was talking about how our paper job program wouldn't work. There has to be some flaws because it's too expensive. And I said, well, here's the numbers. Here's how it does work. And it might, I said, I, you know, I, well, what I said is, I said, you could be right at your current pricing. It might be too expensive for you, but, you know, you could raise your, your, your rates. And, and he was pushing back. We can't raise rates, can't raise rates. And, and I was like, I was like, and I said, well, sir, you probably can't raise rates on your current customers because he's getting a lot of repeat customers he's used over 40 years i mean old, you know older customers and a lot and some older customers aren't willing to pay a whole lot especially ones on fixed income social security all that kind of stuff and that's fine you know there needs to be somebody out there to service those people um 
and, and maybe you give them a break. You know, if your prices are higher, maybe you give those type of people a, a break. But, uh, you know, what you'll find is is when you get, and what I kind of told him, I said it's a different customer that finds you. You know, somebody, they just want it done fast. The reason they aren't, you know, the reason that customer isn't finding you is they're not shopping around. You know, they're going to the top two, three results on Google, maybe the top result on Google. They're calling, and if, and, and if your site answers their question about your service pretty easily and um you know it uh and, and it makes it easy for them to call and you've got somebody that can answer the phone and lock and book a job answer their questions book their job quickly somebody that actually answers the phone uh you have a you give them a way to book online because a lot of customers don't want to call anymore they just want to schedule online that customer it's all about convenience that customer it's all about bring me somebody into my home that i'm not going to feel, feel threatened by that I, I don't think it's going to damage my property and I don't think it's going to come back and rob me or, or do whatever else to me. So it's a different customer. And, and that is what led me to, to think about how people don't want to change. I talk uh, a lot of these uh, people that live in my neighborhood. Um, Amazon, I've got a little bit of inside information on it because um, I, I know somebody that knows, I know somebody that knows somebody that is in partners with Jeff Bezos. Uh, I, I, I can't. I don't want to give too many details out over this, but I mean it's no confidential information. But um, anyway, Bezos invested in his company. It's a very large and trending company. They have quadrupled in size over the past two years. And um, the word I've gotten is the Raleigh area is number is in the top two. Now the only thing that's been released is Raleigh made. I believe is the top ten, but. Um, According to this inside information, uh, it, the Raleigh area is in the top two to get Amazon headquarters to, HQ2. 50,000 jobs um, would be coming this way. And then Apple, Apple is all but about a done deal. Uh, Apple's supposed to be bringing about 10,000 jobs to this area. Nothing officially has been announced, but uh, I mean, that's even been released in the news. That it's almost a done deal. Apple's kind of started opening up hiring for positions that, that would be part of that 10,000. So everything points that uh, to at least locking down Apple, and then there's a good chance 50,000 jobs into downtown Raleigh. Um, jobs, not people, 50,000 jobs. So you figure right there, that's probably 100,000 plus people uh, injected over about a two, you know, two year span and billions of dollars of real estate. The rental market around here, it, people that own apartments right now are about to get filthy rich if that comes in because our average rent right now is 1300 it's projected if about 12, well 1200 1300 somewhere there it's projected that uh, Amazon will probably raise rates by about 30 percent about 300 some dollars three four hundred dollars so um, you raise rental rates they're gonna be building a lot more jacking stuff up traffic is gonna get worse but I'm excited it's opportunity it's opportunity out there. There's a lot of great chance. There's a lot of junk. It's a lot of junk. It's a lot of, a lot of construction where, you know, bins are going to have to get removed. And we don't do a whole lot in construction right now, but the, the market will be overwhelmed with, with construction debris trash. So we charge a lot more than anybody else. We're like, tw we're like three times more expensive than anybody else. We do a better job for uh, this new construction removal, but we've only got a few builders that use us that really appreciate that convenience and that ease of service. They never have to tell us anything. We just take care of it automatically. And so we've only got a few builders that work with us on that. We're gonna get a lot. You know, that's gonna jack trash prices on up. So it's it's a hell of an opportunity. You've got to embrace it. You know, that's part, it's, it's part of it. You gotta embrace it. Now, you know, municipalities need to be careful with change. They can't grow too big too fast and not have the infrastructure in place, the water, the sewer, the, the roads, you know, the transportation. And, and if they don't, you know, and that could be the same in your business, you know, um, if you go out and, uh, you know, you, 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 you do let's say you take on a bunch of new construction work you've never done it before and we we did this mistake so i'm speaking from experience you go out there and you take on a bunch of new construction work but you don't have the trucks and the people to keep up with it then and and we were charging too little is the reason why we charge what everybody else charges and we were getting business hand over fist but then we realized why why we were getting the business is because they were unhappy with the last people that they used that were the same price 
and we realized why they were unhappy because you can't make any money. So I mean, you know, uh, th those guys, you know, every t you just don't make any money um, if you if you service people like they need to get service in the construction industry, and you charge what everybody else is charging, at least in this area, there's no money to be made. So we had to renegotiate the contract. We said, and we said, sorry guys, you know, if you want us to continue doing this, this is what we have to charge. And uh, they tried to negotiate down. Well, if you only did this, you know, if you only came out this amount of times, could you come down? I said, no. I said, if we do a job, we're going to do it right. If we do a job, we are going to do it where you don't have to call us. We're going to do it where you're 100% satisfied. Because as soon as we start pinching pennies and you start not being as happy, you're not going to be as happy in our company, even if it was your idea in the first place. So what we're charging is, is like 1% of the, the, cal, the, the cost you're going to sell that house. And I was like, in this market, you can probably get another 1% uh, out there. This is this real estate market is straight up and vertical right now. So you can um, you could probably get more money and 1% more. Again, that was somebody that was afraid of change, afraid to raise, raise prices. That's a common mistake in junk removal. Uh, never in my in, entire six years I've been in business, not that that's, a, you know, when you're talking with people 30, 40 years in experience, maybe that's not a real long time to them, but... Uh, we've never had pushback at all over a price increase. If anything, we've gotten more business because we were able to spend more on advertising. So, all I'm telling people, change is a great thing. Um, it's got to be controlled. Certainly has to be controlled, but it is an excellent thing when it is controlled. You must embrace change. Always be looking for change in your business. And sometimes you're the change maker. I mean, we're trying to be, JRA is trying to be the change maker. We're out there experimenting. This paper job, to our knowledge, has never been done anywhere ever before. We've got three people doing it now, or coming on board. Three people coming on board on it right now. We will start having testimonials, video testimonials from those guys as soon as we, they have a few weeks under their belt, as soon as we are sending them, you know, 30, 40, 50, 60 jobs a month. Uh, and, and, and they're adding... Uh, 30, 40, 50 thousand dollars in profit to their bottom line for the year. We'll start putting those videos out there. We're confident that is going to happen. Everybody, now it's not surprising that everybody trying it initially are either young or they're new to the junk removal business. It's and it's not surprising because those people got guts. I don't know what happens when you, when you get in business for a while. If you're not careful, you 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 and. Um, now, I imagine there's some experienced business owners out there, and this is where the experience comes in. And this could be smart. Uh, they're like, well, we're going to let these young bucks, these young and experienced guys get out there and try it out. And if it works, then, and, and Jerry knows what the hell they're doing, then they're going, to, uh, they're going to have these people talk about the fact that it works with video testimonies and whatever. So I'm sure we got, we got some, old, some, old, uh, some old sly, experienced business owners out there that are kind of just watching, you know, and saying, all right, what's going to happen here? You know, um, that's like in with, with uh, aircraft or, or, or car. Uh, let's, instead of doing aircraft, let's talk about diesel trucks. Um, the, the, the Ford, you know, Ford, they had the best diesel engine ever made in that 7.3 liter diesel. And, and the Dodge guys, with you know, the Cummins guys are probably not going to appreciate that, but they did. They, that, that engine was rock damn solid. A lot of power, a lot of torque, very reliable. You know, you can get 500,000 miles out of that engine easy. I mean, I know somebody that's got 850, never done any uh, work whatsoever on it at all. And then they came out with the 6.0. And that was the EPA. That's the damn government regulation. You know, they always manage to screw stuff up. And uh, that 6.0 was a piece of crap engine. You had people that ran out there and they, they bought that truck right off the bat. And all of a sudden it was, it was breaking down 40, 50, 60,000 miles. So what happened is, is I know a guy... Um, when every time Ford comes out the new, he he switched to Chevrolet, the Duramax, and he's always been a Ford guy though, and he's kind of he's kind of waiting and seeing what this new Ford engine is going to do after it's been out for six seven years. You know, is it is it going to last? And if it's going to last, he's saying he's going to go back because it's got a lot of power. You know, he likes the Fords, he likes the layout of the Ford trucks, but he's what he's waiting and watching, and that's that's and that's smart. A lot of times, you know, a lot of times that is smart. Let's see if it, it if it proves out. Let's see if it's correct. Let's see if it's made out to be what it you know what. Uh, or if it turns out to be what it's made out to be, and uh, but but those of you that are just that that are not, aren't even going to pay attention to to something new, uh, that aren't even going to that just dig in and say I just want stuff to stay the way it always has, you're going to get left behind, and maybe that's what you want. Maybe you want to get left behind, but um, you know those the, the people that are out there that embrace change or either create change are the ones that are going to go places in life. 
So which one are you going to be? Are you going to embrace change? Are you going to create change? Or are you going to dig in and say, I, I, I don't even want to acknowledge it. I don't want to do it. I want things to stay the way, the way they all, they've always been. So it's up to you guys. Everything in life is up to you. Anything that happens to you, you've caused for the most part. And uh, it, good or bad, you know, it's, it's, it's all up to you. It's all, it's all in your mind. It's all the decisions you make, the way you think. Things tend to happen to people that think negative. Think negative things tend to happen to people that think negatively. People tend to get sick that, that think they're going to get sick. And are worried about that stuff and all. It's, 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 a lot of it's just kind of in your mind. So you got to make a decision. Are you going to create change? You gonna, are you going to uh, embrace change? Or are you going to dig in and not change at all? So, hey, we'll talk to everybody real soon. Y'all have a great day. Let's keep it busy this week. Thanks, guys.